Hi friends. So oftentimes you want to know whether a postcard is an RPPC or not an RPPC. RPPC stands for real picture postcard or real photo postcard or in other words a real photograph printed on a postcard as opposed to anything else. Um, why do you want to know? Because these two kinds of categories of postcards are valued, sold, and collected differently. Luckily, detecting the difference is pretty easy. You just need some really good close-up vision, or more commonly, a magnifying glass or a loop. So when you look at a postcard that is not a real photo, you'll see tiny dots under magnification they'll usually look literally like dots. See, little black dots. Um, they can also look like ellipses or blobs or squares, but those are less common. When you look at a real photo postcard up close, you won't see any dots. And even if you look in these areas of solid color, no dots. It's just smooth, continuous tone, and that's what we call a photograph categorically, a continuous tone image, as opposed to a half tone image for one that's printed with dots. So I'm going to go through some examples of kinds of dots you might see. This is a common um, pattern for full color photos. This is like a um, what we would call a chrome and you'll see these tiny little dots made up actually of cyan which is blue magenta which is pink yellow and black and this is like when you see your newspaper um, funnies pages misregistered and there's like blobs on the edge you're seeing the failure of these dots to line up properly this is, so this is a full color postcard. This is a black and white postcard, again, just black dots. And the density and arrangement of them creates the picture. This is a trickier one. This is actually a some kind of lithographic print, probably. And these are irregularly shaped dots, but they're still dots. These are what I call blobs. This one has more squarish dots. And they're all brown. They're all, um, it's a one color printing job. And the dots are brown. Sometimes they're light brown. Sometimes they're dark brown. Sometimes they're missing and they're white or they're very light, light, light brown. And that's what creates the tone and the shapes in the picture. Again, these are pretty square dots. This is also a one color printing job, but it's blue. So the dots are always either, it's kind of teal, like this. It's a dark teal dot or a white dot or a medium teal dot, but they're dots. And this is a super tricky one. This is a very old um, full color postcard from turn of the century, maybe 1905, 1904. And the dots are really irregular but it's exactly the same process as up here. It's different shades. Here we have cyan, magenta, see some yellow and black probably, or maybe they're using some other color in this process, but still little dots when you look up closely. This is not little specks like this are not representative of real life. They're representative of a process of printing that uses dots to simulate an image. So that's what dots might look like. Here are some samples. So this one, this postcard, you can almost tell just with the naked eye on the scan that this is not a real photo. It started as a photo, but it was printed as a halftone image. So this is not a real photo postcard. You can almost see the dots just here and now. And here's a close-up. It gets more dotty and grainier when you look up close, maybe with just your naked eye. And here, maybe with a loop or magnifying glass, you see 
definitely dots. Really easy to tell. It's like uh, black and white photos printed in the newspaper. Very similar texture and appearance. Here's another one. This is one of these full color postcards, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. Even today they're done similarly. We're not going to talk about digital printing here, just traditional printing. Um, and this is that CMYK or cyan, magenta, yellow, black pattern we talked about where it's kind of, they're in like little rosettes actually, but oops, ignore that. Um, you can see these little rosettes here. Oh, goodness. Um, little circles. And then when you look up close, they are spotty spots. So not an RPPC. Here's a slightly trickier one. This looks pretty continuous tone just from the outset. Like if you look in the sky, it's really hard to see dots. And you'll notice this paper is textured. It has, the paper has a tactile physical texture of dots. So it's a little tricky. And you look up close and you see the paper dots, but you can actually start to see the printing dots in some areas of light shadow. See right in there, dots. And if we look even closer, there's definitely dots. So this is not a real photo. This is an early halftone image. And here we are next. I'm sorry, the um, slides seem to have a mind of their own. Here's another one that's kind of tricky. Um, this is, again, a really, <clears throat> excuse me, old image. And it's really smooth in some parts. It's hard to tell. But if you look up closely, you start to get this texture. And again, this is an example of these spotty, irregular four color dots that are indicative of early four color printing um, on postcards. It's, you know, there's a lot more complicated history to it, but that's for another day. Okay, this one. Now this looks really smooth. I'm looking at the sky and it's, um, you know, not what we call an Ansel Adams quality photo, like the sky is all white, but you don't see any texture in there. And certainly, if you look up really closely, you still don't. And you don't see any in here, you just see a continuous tone that goes like black, gray, lighter gray, lighter gray, lighter gray. It's very smooth, there's no dots. This is a real picture postcard, it's a real photograph. And um, this one's a little dirty, but same deal. The sky is, has gone to white more or less, and there's just no tone or texture in there. And all of these color transitions are really smooth. Um, smoother than you would see with the dots because the dots can't uh, create as crisp an image. This is very crispy, <laughs> but if you look up closely, it's super crispy. I mean, this is blown up so much that it's starting to blur, but there's a real crispness about even these details because it is, is a real photograph. And you can see in all of this, um, all these rocks, the colors are, you know, the light and shadows, no dots. Here's yet another one. And in this one, this uh, image is kind of faded, but I look in the snow. It doesn't have any dots in it. I can tell with the naked eye. And if you look up super close in the snow, no dots. All the details are super crispy in here. Okay, here's a tricky one. It looks really smooth. It looks like it's hand colored, which can happen on um, RPPCs or on printed photos. And when I look at it really closely, it's smooth in here. And this may be a pattern, but it looks kind of like 
smooth and smushy and not really defined as a grid of any sort or doesn't have those dots like the different colored splotches in the old color photo. So what is it? Ah, trick question. It's a drawing <laughs> that's been probably lithographed or some other type of printing, but just look at it. It's not a real photo because it's not a photo. And that's something we almost forget sometimes. It has to, you know, look like a photograph to be a photograph in most cases. So a few other rules of thumb are that um, both RPPCs and printed photos can have a gloss, glossy or matte finish. They can be printed on any color of background paper, like we saw the one that had, this one has texture, and back here, this here is printed actually on a brown, light brown, like a paper bag color paper with brown ink, but it's still printed. Um, photographs are less likely to be printed on novel colors of paper, more likely white or off-white. Um, and there are also, um, usually real photos are going to be black and white, but they can be a tint, like a tint of black and white, like they, there can be, can be all blue and white, that's a cyanotype, or uh, sepia and white, or brown and white. Or, theoretically, they can be full color, like the full color version of this sort of thing. Could be a real photo printed, um, but those tend to be from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, more to 60s and 70s, and they don't really look like postcards. They look either like a Polaroid that has a postcard cardboard back thing stuck on it so it could be mailed and it's the size of a land camera of Polaroid not of a postcard. Um, 70s ones tend to be those 70s snapshots that are I'm going to say about four by five and they have rounded corners and that very 70s film stock quality and then they just have the postcard mailing surface stamped on the back not the size of a postcard, doesn't look like a postcard, looks like a photograph or a snapshot. And then there's 50s ones that are sort of black and white versions of that. They don't really look like a postcard either. They're odd sizes, look more like a snapshot. So those exist, but they're not really what we're talking about when we're talking about postcards. Um, anything else? Yeah, there are trickier there are trickier ones, but I'm not going to go into that here. I might do another video or audio or something where I talk about the detailed um, uh, vagaries of printing technology and go into it a little further. But this is basics and dots, no dots, should get you pretty far in finding out whether your postcard is an RPPC or not. Okay, thanks.